Uh, Donald Trump versus Caitlin Collins. That's essentially what this was. This town hall last night on CNN. Did you watch it? Well, we want to know what you uh, thought about it. Uh, good and bad. 800-859-0957. 800-859-0WJR. Kevin, to me, um, we'll get your take as well, but this is probably the worst presidential town hall I have ever seen. I mean, from the get-go. I'm not kidding. It was it was, an, it was not a town hall. It was this back and forth argument between Donald Trump and the moderator, <laughs> Caitlin Collins. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was a yeah. crazy <laughs> night. I'm so glad I watched it. I'm so glad I taped it so that I could go back, go back and, and watch, watch it, it again. Yeah. I did usually I, I watch these things with a notepad. I take notes as I'm yes. going. I didn't. I just watch it, and I my jaw was dropping. I just you're I, giggling. I I, well, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was you know what I would describe it as. It was like a Donald Trump rally with a heckler on stage. Yes, like next thing. Like, exactly. Like, that's like, a great way to put it. Like that's what it felt that's like. That's not true. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody there to really. They needed a moderator between the two of them, yes. and the the audience seemed very pro Donald Trump. So it felt like he was right because they clapped at everything he said. I, and they I moaned, and when she made a comment, like you know, yeah, you know, winners and losers. I don't know. Donald Trump, Caitlin Collins, CNN, Truth. I don't know. Let's bring in Rashini Rashkumar, political strategist, attorney, and host of the Crisis Files. Good morning, Rashini. How are you? Good morning, guys. I have so much to say about this. <laughs> Kevin, I, too, usually have the notepad ready to take notes, especially when I know I'm going to come on with you guys in the morning. Oh, my gosh. I did not need to take notes. Every bit of this was seared in my mind, sadly, forever. I mean, this was like almost like WWE in its <laughs> own strange way. It was. And, and and Donald Trump was saying things that uh, could on their own could make big headlines. And I don't care which topic you want to take, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, Russia, Ukraine, abortion, uh, the border. I mean, he was making headlines left and right. And she was so busy trying to pin him down to say something. He was saying stuff anyways. I don't know. It was crazy. But let's go through it. Let, so Donald Trump. How did he do? Did he was was it smart for him to go on? Did he come out better, worse, or indifferent? Well, he probably came out better. I mean, he always had an answer, whether there was truth involved in the answer or not. There was always an answer, and it seems to get applause from the audience. And as far as the choreography of this, I mean, I applaud CNN for saying, "Hey, let's get a bunch of Republicans out there and showcase that we're not just about Democrats." But most of the questions. When she would go to the audience, I think, looking for some kind of reprieve, they would ask a question that just played right into Donald Trump's hands. So that also wasn't the best idea uh, to have only Republicans, uh, at least that's who it seems were asking all the questions. So the choreography overall was strange. Um, Caitlin's questions always seemed to be like this gotcha subtextual message. I just wanted her to be a credible journalist. And look, when I've watched her on CNN, I, I think she does a good job. I thought this was just a little strange that she was kind of in an attack mode when she really didn't need to be. That lessened her credibility. Yeah, it just it didn't necessarily feel like she was being a journalist. It felt like she felt like it was her job to stand up for all of the fact checking and all of the Democratic talking points at once. And it felt odd it just was it was very weird but i wanted to ask you about cnn um they they i'm sure they got ratings uh but do you think they have regrets um they they gave them the platform uh people were mad at them for it what, what do you think cnn's what's going on in cnn headquarters uh, this morning you know i mean i would think they're shell-shocked but i mean i don't know that it helped or hurt them you know it, it Again, it seemed that the moderator was the Democrat in the room. The audience was all Republicans. And then depending on the content, you know, Donald Trump is, is one way or the other, plays into his own uh, narrative. So this was very strange. I don't know that it did the country any good. I don't know if it, you know, helped us understand what's happening in 2024 anymore. And I think, you know, as much as, there's been some criticism of the other Republican contenders and that they're not saying much, kind of hoping that Donald Trump will just mess up. Uh, ultimately, I think it was probably fine for them to be waiting on the sidelines to just kind of see how this goes and figure out what they can pick apart. Uh, it was just like, 
I, my husband came up. He, he just said, I couldn't, I can't watch this. Yeah. And I said, wow, this is time we're never going to get back in our lives. <laughs> Those of us who did watch it. Can't right? stop watching well, it. It, it was just, so it was just strange. one big eye roll yeah. to me. I mean, the line of questioning yeah. from Kaylin Collins, it was really as to me, it was what was predicted. She, she had brought up the 2020 election uh, and Trump's claim of it being fraudulent. She brought up the Access Hollywood tape. I mean, these are the same old questions that we've been asking and getting answers from for years now. But but could Donald Trump have handled that better? Because to me, these are just his trigger points. And that's the way she wanted to steer the conversation. Could he have done a better job in responding? Yeah, Tom, really good point on both parts. What I hated was that we keep on talking about the past. Both the moderator and Donald Trump had this real opportunity to bring us into the present and the future so Donald Trump could have talked about what are his plans for the country. I mean, I guess the biggest news he made was that he'd end Ukraine-Russia in a day. Wasn't that something like he said something like yeah, that? Yeah, 24 hours. He yep. ended in a day. Yeah, yeah in 24 hours. Yeah. And he's cool with defaulting the, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah. debt ceiling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, these are the things that's like, okay, let's explore that because that's what – those kinds of things, the here and now and the future, are what, if I had been moderating that panel, and I'm sure you too, Kevin, we would have like jumped right in there and go, okay, give us your plan. Give us the steps. Instead, we're always talking about the past. And that's what really makes me angry as not just an analyst, but as a citizen. You know, I'm trying to figure out who should I vote for in 2024, because if it's a repeat of Trump and Biden, I'm pretty ticked off. As an American. Yeah, and I think the Jim Lehrer days of moderating a, a debate are over. This was all about Caitlin yes. Collins and Donald Trump. Listen, I've seen I've seen TN, uh, CNN town halls before with Joe Biden and other Democratic candidates, and those candidates were often asked questions about their opponent, and, and like that would be Donald Trump back then. So, do you think with what may be the largest influence peddling and foreign bribery scandal hovering over the current Oval Office? That maybe Caitlin Collins should have asked Donald Trump about that, seeming that Joe Biden will likely be his his opponent if they both win their respective primaries. Yeah, absolutely. I and and that would have also given her more credibility and CNN more credibility because CNN is accused of leaning left. So you know, this is an opportunity. I think the headline. I mean, I think we are all a little surprised. Like, wow, Trump has you know, a town hall on CNN. If anything, it's a win from him for him that it wasn't on Fox News. So this was the opportunity for CNN to show, hey, yeah, we can be neutral. We can be the news organization for no matter what political persuasion or if you're an independent. And they really lost that opportunity by not jumping on some of the appropriate questions. I mean, if you are a journalist, and you both know I'm very sad about the state of journalism in our country right now, if you truly are a journalist, there are different lines of questioning I wanted to see, both as an ex-reporter myself and as an American. We're right there with you, and so we appreciate your analysis on this, as always. Roshini Rajkumar, host of the Crisis Files podcast, and of course a political analyst, and a former reporter, and an attorney. You're so many things, Roshini. You're also a guest of the program. Oh, well, appreciate it. And a wonderful friend. Thanks yes. so much, guys. <laughs>